Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here after Vanderbilt's 85 to 82 loss at the hands of Mizzou. Vanderbilt remains winless as a program at Mizzou Arena, 0-7 now, and uh, extends their road losing streak against ranked teams to 16 games. And those are two stats you don't really want to hear at the beginning of a post-game show after Vanderbilt played really well uh, and had a chance to win against a ranked team on the road in a tough environment. But that's kind of the reality of the SEC this season and uh, a reality of where Vanderbilt is as a program right now. Vanderbilt does some good things, just haven't done enough recently to make up for that impossible schedule they have. And it's certainly not getting any easier from here. Alabama uh, will be faced in about two weeks. Arkansas is going to be faced next Saturday, a week from today. And Tennessee uh, is the team that Vanderbilt has to see next on the road in Knoxville, a team with Final Four aspirations. So things certainly won't get easier from here for Vanderbilt. They will for a little bit in late January, a little bit in February, but for the most part, these are all games that are going to be really challenging for Vanderbilt to win, and they're going to have to bring their A game if they're going to do it today. I would say they brought close to that. Uh, they played really solid, didn't turn it over as much as maybe I thought all of 14 turnovers is a story, and one that I'm going to get into, uh, they lost the turnover battle by eight, but Vanderbilt, I thought, rebounded really well. Their offense flowed pretty well for the opponent they had to face and kind of how they can get you out of character. But Vanderbilt just didn't do enough late to win, and that was the story. That's what Stackhouse said um, in the presser that somehow was not recorded by me because of Wi-Fi and also wasn't recorded by Vandy Athletics because of uh, like a file issue on their computer. So just a tough day in that Zoom call. Uh, I will try to summarize what Stack said here and there throughout the video, though. But turnovers, I think, were the biggest negative. Um, also, that Vandy just didn't make enough plays down the stretch. Rebounding was certainly the... Most impressive thing they did, out-rebounded Mizzou by nearly 20, grabbed 15 offensive boards. 17 second chance points is something to build on, and Ezra Mignon actually grabbed six rebounds. So, solid day for Vanderbilt, and Ezra Mignon has really blossomed into what they thought he could be recently here. Um, it was averaging about six and a half points a game throughout non-conference play throughout most of it. But as we got deeper into the non-conference play season, and uh, as we get into conference play now, Ezra Mignon is averaging double digits uh, in those games past the, I think it was Alabama A&M game past then. He's really started to blossom here, had 24 points in the SEC opener against South Carolina, then had 12 today, uh, had seven rebounds to just two turnovers, and certainly a lot of positives from the backcourt today for Vanderbilt. Jordan Wright had 14, Ezra had 12, Noah Shelby hit some big shots and uh, looked really comfortable. He was really letting that fly, and uh, Stack is certainly given him a longer leash, a leash that he hasn't really given many of his freshmen. He's started to play Shelby a little bit more. The end door haven't played recently. Lewis charted three minutes, I think. That was a smart move to put him in for a little bit just to kind of deal with that pressure because he only has two turnovers this year. Had the third one today, but I don't know if that was really a turnover. Vanderbilt's backcourt, though, I think was one of the positive signs today as well. Jordan Wright had 14, like I said. Ezra had a good day. Miles Studi, though, is somebody that I think we need to touch on. Uh, they schemed against him, and I think that's starting to happen a little bit more. Once they realize Vanderbilt doesn't really have the off-the-dribble ability, they want to make eyes other than Miles Studi beat them. And uh, I think that happened today. You saw a box in one late, which I didn't think I'd seen in an SEC basketball game this year. But Miles Studi had the box in one on him, and uh, Vanderbilt's been intentional about getting him involved throughout the year. Uh, Mizzou today was intentional about making sure he wasn't involved. And... I think that was a story. Uh, they're going to need Miles Studi down the stretch here. They didn't need him as much today. He did miss those two late free throws that would have made this a completely different game, turn it on its head. But you can't really blame Miles Studi for this loss in particular just because of how they got up into him and forced other guys to beat them. I think that might be the blueprint for Vanderbilt this year. If you have physical bigs and you can stop Miles Studi and be intentional about stopping him, you make Ezra beat you, you make Jordan Wright beat you. I'm not sure Vanderbilt can do that consistently, although those guys are good players. I think it has to come through Studi. It has to come through Robbins for this team to consistently win in the SEC. And uh, it hasn't happened to a Studi in the last few weeks. He was Vanderbilt's most consistent player throughout early non-conference play. But ever since Grambling State, uh, he's kind of taken a step back. Has had one double-figure scoring game. He's averaging less than seven points a game since. So uh, it's been a tough couple weeks for Miles Studi, uh, but they're going to need him to step up his SEC play continues and I do think that's something that uh, will happen I think Stack's going to be intentional about getting Miles Studi looks and Studi eventually is going to knock him down he's shooting in the 40s high 40s uh, from three and 
it's just a guy you don't want to leave open. And even though I think they got to him a little bit with the coverages today, uh, as evidenced by those free throws, which he missed badly, just looked like he kind of lost his touch because of the coverage he had on him. Um, I think Mizzou is a team that's going to put a little more emphasis on Studi than other teams will. I think more teams will shift that to Robbins, but Mizzou knew they couldn't because they didn't have the size. Robbins had 16 points, had seven rebounds, went five for eight from the field, and uh, got to the line a good amount too, which is really important for Vanderbilt down the stretch. A lot of teams are going to have two or three bigs the next team Vanderbilt sees in Tennessee is going to have two or three bigs who are going to play a lot of minutes and have a lot of physicality. All three of whom are really good. Um, but Liam Robbins, if he can foul, get those guys into foul trouble against the teams that maybe don't have all that depth in the front court, it's going to be really important. And uh, he's Vanderbilt's best player. Jordan Wright has made a case against it lately, but Liam Robbins uh, really stands alone in that right now and uh, has done a great job throughout the season. Is kind of emerging as one of their leaders, it seems like. And uh, I think is a guy that they have to play through going forward. I thought they should have played through him a little bit more today even, although I don't know how possible that is. Vanderbilt had the size advantage down low. He was getting guys in foul trouble. Just seemed like they went away from him a little bit too early and uh, didn't give him enough touches. Only took eight field goals. Got to the line a few times as well, but uh, didn't quite see what I wanted to out of him. Although he had 16 points, I don't think it was really his fault. He just didn't get as many touches as maybe I would have thought. Quentin Malloy Brown, I thought, posted his best outing of the year today. Had seven points, three for five from the field. Grabbed a couple rebounds, uh, didn't get a block, but I thought made a little bit of an impact defensively as well. Uh, I do think Stack has a point with him being kind of the tone setter. He looked real smart today because Vanderbilt got out to an 8-2 run, and then their starters came in. Kind of see what he's going for there uh, in terms of the starting lineup. I think that's not going to change. So it's one of those things he's going to be stubborn about, and uh, it's probably not going to change. But today you could kind of see his thinking with that starting lineup as we're coming off the bench, Jordan Wright coming off the bench, Robbins coming off the bench. Uh, and you could kind of see how that starting group set the tone. And then those guys came off the bench and kind of embraced that uh, motto is the bench mob, I guess. I don't know if Vanderbilt fans are really looking forward to embracing that, but uh, it's something that we're probably going to have to see throughout the rest of the year. And uh, you saw it tonight, kind of what the blueprint for that was and why they wanted to do it. But solid day for Vanderbilt overall. The rebounding stood out. Uh, the turnover battle, I think, is something we need to touch on as well. Vanderbilt lost the turnover battle 16 to, what was it, 16 to 6, something along those lines. And uh, 14 to 6, correct? Normally I have the stats on my computer, but the computer Wi Fi is off today. So we're going with the phone. Vanderbilt, 4 6 turnovers and uh, turned it over 14 times. I asked Stack about that in the post game. He didn't think that was maybe the most consequential thing in the game. But he did acknowledge that that is something they're trying to make as an emphasis point, starting to kind of get through. And um, I do think that's something that maybe as we go down the stretch here, uh, Vanderbilt has to get better at. And they've only won the turnover battle in four games this year. A lot of those games have been close and it hasn't been a huge issue. But you just look at the whole body of work and realize that Vanderbilt's not good enough to turn it over at the level they do. Alabama might be able to get away with that because all the explosive scores they have. Kentucky might be able to get away with that because all the offensive rebounds they get with Oscar Sheboy, Tennessee has all that depth and plays incredible defense. So maybe they could get away with it. Vanderbilt doesn't force enough turnovers and uh, they don't have enough of a high powered offense to really account for all those turnovers happening today. Wasn't quite as bad. Stack mentioned that Mizzou is one of the best teams at forcing turnovers in the country. And he's not wrong there. Uh, you kind of saw that what Vanderbilt could do to Mizzou once they would get it across half court and kind of get into a little bit of a half court transition type offense. It's, it's kind of a mix because Mizzou's running back after getting beat on the press uh, and Vanderbilt is in the half court with with, uh, with numbers, but maybe not the numbers that you would think of like a two on one. But Vanderbilt was able to kind of get into transition-ish game and that seemed to really bode well for them. So the turnovers killed them at the end of the first half. Mizzou had 10 points in the first half off of turnovers. And uh, that was really important as they tried to storm back into this game. But Vanderbilt, I don't know if that's the biggest story anymore. It was a huge story early in the season. They seem to be getting better there. Uh, I asked Stack about that as well. It just seems like he thinks they're kind of improving there as well. But man, Vanderbilt has got to stop turning it over at the level they do. And they also have to force more turnovers. I've been over this speech a million times, but 
if you turn over 14 times, you can't expect to win if you turn if you force six turnovers. And that was kind of what they wanted their identity to be as they headed into the year. They wanted to force a ton of turnovers, and they couldn't do that today. Um, haven't been able to do that much recently, although they have the, won the turnover battle a few times against the mid-majors, uh, lost it to South Carolina, even though they won that game, lost it drastically today, and kind of canceled out all that prowess they had on the glass. So certainly things you don't want to see for Vanderbilt. It's not just that they're giving up those points off turnovers as well. It's that they're throwing away possessions. And uh, that's really important as well. Vanderbilt turned it over on 20% of their possessions today, which is a little bit lower than in the past because this was a more fast paced game, but they didn't really force many turnovers. And that's probably the bigger issue. Um, but there were some bad shots taken by Vanderbilt. And uh, I think they still have a ways to go before they're kind of the crisp offense that we had seen against Southeastern Louisiana, or uh, at times during the South Carolina game, or even times today, uh, especially early in the first half. Uh, I don't know if Vanderbilt is fully there consistently yet. And uh, there's positives to take from today, but it's also just a reminder that Vanderbilt has issues and they're going into a rough stretch here where even if they play well like this, it's gonna be really tough for them to win games like they have uh, throughout non-conference play. And it's gonna be a lot tougher even after that stretch as they get into the dog days of the season uh, and things start to mount, especially if they lose all these ranked games. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through the technical difficulties. I'll put some, uh, maybe not quotes, but some takeaways from the presser out on the board uh, as soon as this video gets posted and uh, we'll go from there. I appreciate you guys. I will get the presser on Tuesday. I'll be at the game in Knoxville barring unforeseen events or my parents killing me because I don't want to, or they don't want me to go to the game. That's a joke, by the way. They, they're they kind of okay with me going, so we will see how that goes. But the plan is that I will be in Knoxville on Tuesday and I will be able to record the presser in person. Wi-Fi issues won't be an issue. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, God bless. And uh, I will be back on Tuesday with another post game. Check out our work at vandysports.com. And God bless. Peace.